Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lewis here. Now, have you been experiencing the following symptoms? Number one, a burning sensation in your hands, your feet, and mostly it comes at night and it's so uncomfortable. Or you can feel like you're being pierced in your legs. So there's that tingling uh, effect. So you feel like somebody's piercing your legs with a needle. Or sometimes these legs get so cold. Also, have you experienced tiredness all the time, feeling fatigue, muscle cramps, and sometimes inability to concentrate? Do you have those headaches, that migraine that is so stubborn, and even after you take a, a, a sip or a glass of your salt water, it doesn't go away as a man? Have you also experienced erectile dysfunction? And in both genders, have you ever experienced infertility? You're trying to get a child and it's not working. Now, this could be the symptoms of vitamin B deficiency. So vitamin B12 is an essential vitamin in the group of the B vitamins, which are basically water-soluble vitamins. Now this vitamin is so essential in our body to perform a different functions. Number one definitely is DNA synthesis. And therefore you cannot synthesize that DNA and that protein without having vitamin B12. Number two function is basically energy production. Number three has to be CNS function. And that's the reason why it is involved in myelination of nerves. Okay, that coating of nerves. And therefore it is involved in the brain function and nervous function. And the last one is basically involved in the synthesis of red blood cells. So that means if you do not have enough vitamin B12, then chances of you getting into anemia will be available. Chances of you having nerve problem will be available. And that's the, pro the reason why you have that numbness and that uh, tingling sensation in your feet and your hands. DNA synthesis, that's the reason why you'll have issues with your CNS again. And above all, energy. So you'll feel tired, you'll feel fatigued. So those are just basically the functions of vitamin B12 in our system. And even though that this vitamin is very abundant in many foods, we still have a higher number of people experiencing a deficiency of vitamin B12. And what are the reasons why we experience uh, this uh, deficiency in vitamin B12? Number one reason has to be poor dieting. So poor dieting basically means you are consuming foods, but these foods, the body does not find any nutritional value in those foods. The carbohydrates, the processed foods, the juices, the energy drinks, all these foods are classified under poor diets because they are empty calories. Whatever they do is just to take you into a vitamin B12 deficiency. Number two has to be gut dysbiosis, which basically means you have a messed up gut and you have gut conditions that are causing you malabsorption and therefore you cannot absorb essential vitamins in your system, including vitamin B12. So for you to recover this, you have to start fixing your gut. Then there are diseases like autoimmune conditions, other diseases that affect the absorption of vitamin B12 in the gut. So we will talk about that. We also have drugs. Like for diabetic patients, they have drugs like metformin, a drug that inhibits the absorption of vitamin B12. Then finally, we have surgeries like the uh, gastric bypass, where you reduce the amount of the stomach, and therefore, amount of B12 that is being absorbed is altered. And also, the acid concentration in the stomach is altered. On drugs also, we will mention the PPIs and how uh, NSAIDs, antacids, and the omeprazoles, how they mess up your gut and lead you into vitamin B12 deficiencies. So what are the sources of vitamin B12? If you want to get this uh, back to uh, its optimum absorption or optimum levels, then what are the foods that you're supposed to eat? We have talked about eggs every other time and eggs are rich in vitamin B12. We also have the liver. We have fatty meats. We have those animal fat. We have those dairy, okay? Products that come from dairy like ghee, like butter, like cheese, okay, like tallow. These are the fats that are essential and high in vitamin B12. The avocados, the nuts. So vitamin B12 is very yeah, essential and very abundant in even vegetables. So those are just basically the sources of vitamin B12. And I know most of us have been consuming all those. However, you still end up having that numbness. You still lose that vision. You still end up in anemia. You still end up in that tiredness and those migraines every other time. And the reason is 
basically the five that we've mentioned here. So if you've had a gastric bypass, then definitely you'll have to start to add during your uh, vitamins absorption. It's also important to note that young adults, pregnant women, and the elderly can get this condition very easily. And the reason is basically, again here, so most adults are taking drugs for diabetes. And these drugs block the absorption of vitamin B12. Most pregnant women are consuming poor diets, sugar, seed oils, wheat products, and those are the diets that mess up your gut. Once they mess up your gut, then you cannot absorb uh, these vitamins. And that's the reason why most pregnant women are on injections for omeprazoles or resomeprazoles for those uh, acid reflux disorders. So you have to fix your gut before you uh, start absorbing these nutrients in their adequate amounts. Some people have diseases like autoimmune. Some people have IBS, inflammatory bowel syndrome, inflammatory colitis. Some have SIBO. Okay? And some have conditions that are affecting the gut wall, basically the leaky gut. So all these conditions will alter your absorption of vitamin B12. Now, having talked about that, I want you to understand that vitamin B12 has challenges in absorption and possibly that's the reason why most of the people are suffering from vitamin B12 deficiency. So the body absorbs vitamin B12 through a two-step process. Step number one, understand that vitamin B12 comes combined with proteins from the diet. And that's the reason why most vegetarians suffer vitamin B12 deficiency because this vitamin comes attached to animal protein in most times, okay? So once it comes that way, then we have to have a concentrated stomach acid to rip off these proteins into smaller proteins and therefore leave vitamin B12 as a free molecule or as a free vitamin for absorption. Because remember, if it is still bound to those proteins, then it cannot be absorbed. That tells you, if you're consuming foods that are messing up your gut HCL, remember that acid is supposed to be under a pH of 1 to 3. So if you eat any foods like alcohol, like sugars, like seed oils, these foods that mess up like milk, that neutralize that stomach pH, that is a problem because you will not free up vitamin B12 from those proteins. So step number one is this HCL in the stomach has to rip off this vitamin B12 from the protein. Then after it's free, when the B12 is free, now it can combine with something called intrinsic factor. Now intrinsic factor is basically a protein that binds this vitamin B12 and helps it transport it from the gut into the system. It is produced from the gastric cells that are called the parietal, parietal soil cells. So these parietal cells are the ones that produce the intrinsic factor. So step number one, HCL, breaks it up, leaves vitamin B12 as a free vitamin. Then after that, that vitamin B12 has to bind to this intrinsic factor so that it can be absorbed. Now the challenge comes here. If somebody has a condition like pernicious anemia, remember we mentioned diseases here, as the challenge to absorption of vitamin B12. So if you have a disease like pernicious anemia, that means you cannot absorb vitamin B12 effectively because you are lacking the intrinsic factor, which is very important as a carrier of vitamin B12 into the system. Okay, so that begins, uh, 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 that's, that's your problems of vitamin B12 deficiency in the system. And therefore, those people who have pernicious anemia go through these symptoms, the ones I just mentioned. So what are the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency? And just before I handle that, now you understand the reason why you're eating that protein-rich diet or that keto diet, but you still end up having those burning sensations, those hot feet in the night, that tingling effect, that numbness. And sometimes this is confused with diabetic, uh, diabetic neuropathy. So it's confused with that because all the symptoms that you'll experience as a result of vitamin B12 deficiency are the same same symptoms that diabetic people experience as a result of loss of nervous transmission throughout their extremities. So take note of that. Fix your gut. Once you fix your gut, you concentrate that HCL and therefore it can be able to break down those proteins to release free vitamin B12 for absorption. Number two, Fix your gut because if you don't have a fixed gut, then you will not be able to produce the intrinsic factor that carries vitamin B12 from the stomach into the system. So heading straight to the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. 
Symptom number one has to be basically anemia. So why do we have anemia? Remember, as we started, we mentioned that this vitamin B12 is involved in red blood cell synthesis. Now, if you have a deficiency in vitamin B12, what happens is your body creates or forms or synthesizes red blood cells that are very huge in size, but they are useless. They do not have capacity to carry oxygen to tissues. That is what we call megaloblastic anemia. Now, this is where you start getting those symptoms of tiredness, shortness of breath, and sometimes even fainting because of anemia. So vitamin B12 is very important in fixing your anemia. Number two, definitely concentration problems. Now, these concentration problems happen so many times in children, and sometimes when you take your child to the hospital and they are diagnosed with ADHD, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, that could be one symptom for vitamin B12 deficiency. Now the issue is, we will run to the doctor and the doctor prescribes drugs to help your child get over ADHD. But in real sense, we have not fixed the diet of the child. We have not fixed the gut of the child because we are giving these children protein formulas, we are giving them wheat products, we are giving them soda, we are giving them uh, wheat products, and these are altering the gut of this child. And therefore, this child has a problem in absorption of vitamin B12 because of a messed up gut and poor diet. So those two bring our children all these issues. And that's why it's important for you to fix your child's gut. Let your children eat healthy diets. Once they do that, then definitely they will never have a problem with vitamin B12 a pro uh, deficiency. Number three has to be gut problems. So, so if you have those ulcers, you have those uh, in a, a malabsorption, those indigestion problems, diarrhea, constipation, that is also one symptom of vitamin B12. Unfortunately, the gut issues are very wide. It's a wide symptom for most of the conditions. Diarrhea, vomiting, and nausea, and all this in absorption and mal maldigestions. All of them are symptoms that are so wide. So we cannot base our argument so much on GIT problems. However, it's important for you to note that these GIT problems can come as a result of vitamin B12 a deficiency. Another one has to be the most common one, headaches and migraines. So how is it possible that our women are going through all these headaches and migraines, but nobody is giving attention to vitamin B12? Sometimes we talk about the hormonal contraceptives, and yes, they are dangerous to our women. They bring a lot of issues and, uh, as a side effect. So the headaches and the migraines and the vaginal spotting all the time. However, if you're not on hormonal contraceptives, you're you're trying as much as possible to maintain a good diet, but you still have those, uh, you're sleeping perfectly, you're taking your walks through the sun, but you still feel those headaches and those migraines. That is, uh, there's a chance that you have vitamin B12 deficiency and therefore you need to up your game through fasting to fix your stomach uh, pH and the gut wall, and then start consuming healthy keto diets, okay? That is how you start recovering from that. Above all, you can take water that has a pinch of salt. Next has to be muscle cramp, the obvious one. Muscle cramps are a very uh, prone symptom of vitamin B12. So muscle, prom muscle uh, cramps, uh, migraines, and most men, erectile dysfunction. Now remember, vitamin B12 is involved in DNA synthesis and also we need folate. So men who are experiencing erectile dysfunction one, you have to fix your testosterone, then you fix your diet because vitamin B12 and folic acid are very important in your erection. But for both sexes, infertility is a huge deal. So anytime you're trying to get a child and you've tried to fix all this, you fixed your weight, you fixed your diet, you fixed your gut, and you're getting these problems, then there's a high chance you go for vitamin B12 deficiency screening together with that uh, sperm count and that sperm quality tests. So that will help you uh, know where the problem is and most people are suffering from this trying to get a child is not possible yet they're not paying attention to vitamin b12 and however those people who have never fixed their diets and have never are not living a healthy life definitely chances of infertility will come through because erectile dysfunction and infertility is an issue to do with the diets and the lifestyle okay another symptom has to be palpitations and uh, your heart races so fast, so you're sweating all the time. Then we have this tongue that is inflamed tongue, the red tongue. Sometimes uh, we confuse that with other uh, deficiency symptoms like uh, vitamin C, like in vitamin B3. All those can cause an inflamed tongue. However, major role or a major player has to be vitamin B12 deficiency. So once you fix this, 
those sewn, that sewn is in your mouth and those, uh, that tongue that is appearing to be inflamed starts to go back to normal. Then vision disturbances because of course vitamin B12 affects nerves. Through DNA synthesis it will affect your nerves. Now again remember that vitamin B12 sometimes it can be involved in depression and psychosis together with affecting the optic nerve which, which brings you uh, issues in vision and vision disturbances and also that dizziness because of anemia, you can get into depression and psychosis, experience these symptoms. Why are we experiencing these symptoms? Because a drop or a deficiency in vitamin B12 will cause an increase in an amino acid that is called homocysteine. Now that amino acid that is called homocysteine kills all your DNA. It has a problem in DNA synthesis. So it, has, it causes oxidative stress to the cells. And this oxi oxidative stress has a direct impact on your DNA. And once you get a problem with DNA, then definitely you start experiencing de depression, psychosis, and all those effects that come as a result of the CNA, uh, CNS function. Okay, So if you, you are experiencing those psychosis effects, sometimes you don't need an antipsychotic drug. You just need to fix your gut because, again, I mentioned that most of the uh, CNS-related conditions or mental health conditions are hailing from the gut. Actually, 90% of these conditions that we go through, we suffer from, hail from a messed up gut. And already you've realized, if you fix up, if you fix your gut and you fix your diet, then definitely the disease will disappear. You drop the drugs, no surgery, then that fixes your stomach. Once you have that fixed stomach, definitely that's how nature wanted it. So you'll start absorbing nutrients in their adequate amounts. So those are basically some of the symptoms that you'll experience as a result of a vitamin B12. Another symptom before I forget, there is this one that is called ataxia, where you can lose balance. So you might think that that is because of anemia. However, it plays a role, yes. But sometimes that losing, losing balance and maybe failing, falling down comes as a result of vitamin B12 deficiency. And that is a nerve problem also. Okay. So those are just symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. So as a punching line to this video, I want you to understand that diabetic patients sometimes experience the same symptoms that come as a result of vitamin B12 deficiency, like peripheral neuropathy. That basically means you have hurt the nerves that supply your extremities, the hands and the legs, and therefore you might not end up feeling those legs. You might also experience like the pains, like somebody's uh, pricking you with a pin. And sometimes those cold feet and even hot feet, so your legs feel like they're burning. So those are symptoms of diabetes, okay? Now, these symptoms can be confused with vitamin B12 deficiency. That's the reason why, if you are diabetic, you need to be screened also for vitamin B12 deficiency. Again, people who are diabetic, they know of a drug that is called metformin. This drug called metformin is a standard drug in both prediabetes and diabetes, which means it is the first-line drug for diabetic conditions. This drug is very... Uh, 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 toxic to vitamin B12. Why am I saying that? That drug blocks or inhibits the absorption of vitamin B12. Once it inhibits the absorption of vitamin B12, even if you consume a healthy diet, you will not absorb it as long as you're using metformin. So one of the side effects of metformin is inhibition of vitamin B12. Now, those patients who are on diabetes, I already told you they are experiencing peripheral neuropathy. Again, you are blocking, you're using those drugs for diabetes and you're blocking vitamin B12. And that means you're ending up in the same, same condition. So the same, same symptom. That is double tragedy for people who have diabetes and who are on diabetes drugs, specifically metformin. So if you want to recover from this, then if you're diabetic, start fixing that diabetes so that you can end up dropping those drugs. Then you can end up eating your healthy keto and absorb nutrients in their adequate amounts. Number two. I already told you that if you mess up your gut, then you'll have a problem in absorption of these drugs, of this vitamin, sorry. That tells you that people who are on antacids, drugs for ulcers, drugs for gut, the PPIs, omeprazoles, esomeprazoles, pantoprazoles, you are already messing up your stomach pH using these drugs. Once you're doing that, then you'll never have a concentrated stomach HCL to rip off this vitamin B12 from the protein so that it can be combined with intrinsic factor for it to be absorbed. Therefore, automatically, if you're using those antacids, and in this channel we all know we discourage the use of antacids even in the management of ulcers and PUD. 
So if you're using those drugs for PUD, they will block this absorption of this nutrient. Stop using those drugs and fix the diet. Because again, ulcers and H. pylori are fixed by fasting and dietary modifications. Again, if you're on drugs called NSAIDs, if you self-medicate yourself with painkillers like diclofenac, ibuprofen, meloxicam, acyclofenac, selecoxib, those drugs that you use on a daily basis for pain relief, apart from paracetamol, because paracetamol is not an NSAID. So those drugs that you use to control that pain or that arthritis or that gout are drugs that will cause a messed up gut. So they will cause perforations and destruction of the stomach mucosa. That is already a problem because they are already altering the absorption of essential vitamins like vitamin B12. So you will never lack this deficiency. So please talk to your doctor so that he or she can reduce the amount of painkillers. And if at all you have a lot of pain as a result of inflammatory conditions, why don't you handle the cause rather than the symptom? Because these drugs will treat the symptoms, but the cause will still be there. And the cause will come in fixing the gut and fixing the diet. Once you do that, all those inflammatory conditions start to disappear and you will drop those drugs. The last one has to be diets, the wheat products. Now, anytime you consume these wheat products, Sometimes you think uh, chapati is very good and mandazi and bread. All these are wheat products and the pasta and the spaghetti. Even the cereals, those are foods that are rich in gluten. And gluten alters or causes a leaky gut. Once you have a leaky gut, you can know already what happens. You will not absorb vitamin B12. So how do you fix the deficiency of vitamin B12? Number one, definitely you have to start by fasting because you cannot start eating healthy when you have not fixed your gut. So start fasting either intermittent fasting or prolonged periodic fasts. Those will fix your gut, that will fix your HCL in the stomach, and therefore you'll be able to absorb vitamin B12 effectively. Number two, use salt. Salt is very important in the production of HCL, and therefore that will concentrate your stomach acid, and that will make it easier for you to recover from these conditions and to even absorb more of vitamin B12 uh, that you're taking through the diet. Number three has to be Zero sugars, zero wheat products, zero seed oils. If you have to cook your meals, cook them using animal fat. Because again, remember, vitamin B12 is very rich. Yeah, those animal fats are rich in vitamin B12 and they are rich in omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory. So it will heal your gut and you'll have an adequate absorption or optimum absorption of vitamin B12. Now, if you are on any drugs, as we said, drop them. If you're on diabetes drugs, it's high time you start talking to your doctor so that you can edit your diet because diabetes is treated in the kitchen and not with drugs. So do not load your system with drugs that will cause you this deficiency. So this video, if you enjoyed it, we would like you to share it widely because most people are suffering from B12 deficiency without knowing. So make sure you subscribe to our channel, like our videos, comment, ask questions, talk to us about what you need us to talk about, then share these videos, whether on Facebook, whether on your sub status, everywhere. Share it so that it can reach a lot of people. And subscribe and press that notification bell so that anytime we have a brilliant health idea, you will be the first one to be notified.